Do you wanna be a vlogger? Well, today we're gonna to give you some advice on how to get started and how to improve your videos. We're gonna let you know what kind of gear you need to get started with vlogging, as well as some shooting advice and tips, and even editing tips. So you're gonna learn a lot. Stay tuned, it's all coming up. You gotta just press record. Hey everybody, my name is Nolan Moult with Think Media, and today we have the most special guest, the most beautiful guest ever. I'm his wife. Madeline. <laughs> this is Madeline and she has her own YouTube channel where you vlog, right? So yep. all your videos are vlogging videos. Pretty much. And so I've done some vlogging in the past as well. And so together, not, not recently, but a long time ago, <laughs> but Together, we have some really good advice for you guys. If you don't know me, I am a videographer. I produce videos on this channel, Think Media, and I've been doing video for a very long time. And so I know all about the editing and the shooting, and that's something you kind of learned since starting your YouTube channel. Yeah, I learned everything that I ever knew about anything from him. Now, let's start by talking about the gear because that's probably the first thing you start to think about even before editing and all that stuff. Like, what am I gonna shoot my vlogs on? Well, I recommend most people get started with is what they have. And most people have a smartphone and you've done some vlogs on your iPhone yep. and they turned out really good. Give us some of the pros and cons of vlogging on a phone. So the best thing about vlogging on your phone is that it's so simple, it's convenient, it's everywhere with you and you don't have to think about anything. If you're a beginner to cameras, it can be really overwhelming, all the settings, autofocus, audio, and it gets very expensive, whereas this is just a one-stop shop. You have everything you need and it will be a pretty good quality just right out the bat. And like Sean says, you gotta just press record because on the phone, you don't need to change anything. It's all automatic. That makes it really easy, especially for a beginner. So some of the cons I've experienced with the iPhone is that the audio can be a little bit inconsistent because it's just doing <laughs> automatic sound levels. It's and automatic. So yeah. when you're talking quietly or something quiet is happening, it boosts it really high. And yeah. so that's probably, everything sounds a lot louder, especially if it's a quiet moment. Yeah, and it can be a little bit frustrating when you're editing. Another con is that if you have an iPhone 12, I don't know which other ones do it, but I experienced something very frustrating when I first vlogged on this camera, and that was the HDR feature. I wasn't able to edit it in the software that I had. But This is just the brand new iPhone 12, or if you're watching yeah. this later, any other new iPhones, just don't shoot in HDR. Unless they come up with some updates. There's gonna be updates in the future, I know it, but as of right now, turn that off. You're still gonna get good HDR looking video where like the bright sky is going to be in color. And that, that's another good thing about the iPhone. It's really good at kind of showing the shadows and mm -hmm. the highlights but Amazing. don't turn on HDR. I promise you it's going to ruin your life because, and no, it's not. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's gonna ruin your day, at least I promise you because. Your editing process is gonna be very frustrating. <laughs> and no one's watching these videos. It's meant for like real life HDR TVs and monitors. And right now, most people are not watching it on that. So it's just gonna look weird on a regular TV or if someone's watching on their phone, so turn that off and you'll be set to go. And the last thing that I really like about vlogging with my phone is besides it just being in my pocket, it's super casual. If you're not super comfortable vlogging in public or around people, it doesn't seem weird when you pull out your phone and you're filming things. Whereas if you have a big DSLR camera, it can make you feel a little bit more nervous vlogging in public. So it's super inconspicuous. Is that the word? Inconspicuous? Yeah. And no one will really know that you're even vlogging. Now I actually have two cameras that I wanna to recommend to you guys, but before we get to that real quick, I know your favorite camera that you used uh, over these past couple years has been the Canon 90D. Yes. And actually the two cameras I'm gonna to suggest to you guys she hasn't used, but tell me just like from a beginner's standpoint, what are your favorite things about the 90D? So my two favorite things about the Canon 90D is one, the color is amazing. I was just looking back on one of my old videos and I was just like, wow, it's just so beautiful. And the you second- You don't need to edit the color or anything. No, like I you don't. throw it in there, you put yeah. it on YouTube and it looks great. I would say 90, 99% of my videos on my YouTube channel are not color graded at all. And I do have some vlogs with specific cameras that I've tried out. And so if you wanna see raw color, 
those are raw out of the camera. Mm -hmm. But the second thing about the 90D that I particularly love for vlogging is it's really amazing at autofocusing. That is something I have noticed about some other cameras I've used is it's much slower to focus on different things. And that can be very frustrating when you're vlogging because you don't want to look at the screen the whole time because it's very obvious. You just want to know that your camera is doing it for you. And so the first camera I want to recommend to you guys is the Canon M50. If you're looking to get started, it's cheaper than the 90D, but you still get that good color and you get great autofocus and it's a mirrorless camera, which just means you're going to have these newer lenses that Canon's coming out with. And it's really a great camera. We have so many videos on Think Media about it. So you can just search for those. The second camera that I'd recommend to you guys is the Sony ZV-1. The nice thing about this camera is the lens is attached to the camera. So you don't have to worry about getting other lenses. You can pick up a wide angle adapter. Mm -hmm. uh, and Omar has a really cool video on that that you guys can check out too. Those are the two cameras uh, that will just like last you for a long time, whether it comes to YouTube content or vlogging, there are fantastic cameras for getting started. But again, use your phone if you have a phone and use a camera. If you have one laying around, just use it and get started because you just gotta, you just gotta start. All right, next up, I wanted to talk about the planning and the shooting of these vlogs. They kind of go hand in hand. And so first, let's talk about planning the actual shoot. So before you actually start vlogging, what are some of the things that you think about in your day to do to make your vlog interesting? Yeah, so if it's not a day in the life video where I'm trying to show my viewers what my day actually looks like, if it's something a little bit more specific, I will kind of plan out my day. I am a planner person, mm -hmm. so I like to write everything down. That way I have an interesting vlog where I actually am doing something. And so I'll just write out each shot and make kind of a shot list of the things that I'm going to be doing through that day. So making my bed, making my coffee, reading my Bible or whatever it might be for that day. And typically I write out these things just to make sure that I have enough things to film that will make an interesting vlog throughout the day. Another great tip here is to even think through your title and thumbnail for the vlog because if you're just vlogging random stuff <laughs> and then at the end of it you're thinking, wait, what should I use for a thumbnail? What should I use for a title? If you think about that beforehand, you actually might get a better video because people are clicking on that thumbnail title and then of course your video is what they're gonna watch, but thinking through that beforehand can give you cool ideas for stuff to incorporate into your vlog or even take a thumbnail photo. That's like a huge tip for a lot of people. They don't actually yes. take a photo for vlogs. They'll do a screenshot, but if you can like grab a quick photo and then you can edit that a little bit and that's a great way to get a really nice thumbnail for your vlog. I think you should just at me next time because this is something <laughs> that I have a hard time with. It's definitely something that when I do thoroughly think through what is this vlog about, what is title going to be, what should the thumbnail be, uh, it makes my life much easier post filming because nothing's worse than having to scrub through every frame of your video trying to find a decent photo where you like, I don't like, but are actually right. like trying to smile, like don't look awkward. So definitely, definitely do that. I'm working on that. We can work on that. All right, let's talk about the shooting of your day, okay? Obviously, you don't have to film everything. Uh, a lot of people think that when you're vlogging that people film everything and then in the edit, they just cut stuff out. You actually can set the camera down and enjoy <laughs> your day as well, but you do want to, it's a balance because you do want to record those entertaining moments or those moments that people want to see. And I think your tip on planning of actually writing it down will remind you to pick up that camera Yes. when that moment comes in your day. So the planning and shooting really go hand in hand. And there's just a balance of like, you don't have to film everything, don't. you know? Yeah, you don't because <laughs> then you're going to be in the edit room for s the edit room. I feel like that's an old school thing. If you film everything in your day, it's going to take hours yeah. to go through and find good clips. So here's a tip that I do just in general, but it's editing in your head. So if you can edit in your head, you know, I'm going to film this and then the next piece is going to be this. You're like, okay, I don't have to film until I get to this location. I don't have to film until I get in the car. And knowing that in your head of like what this is going to look like really helps a lot. Again, that takes practice because you might not know even what to do next. And so if you're just getting started, you want to mess around, maybe record a little bit extra, see what works, and then yeah. you can start editing in your head as you go. So a good example of what Nolan is talking about, 
Sometimes for my morning routine, I will do B-roll, which means I just have my camera running and then I will put some music over the top. So that means that I don't need to be talking in those clips. I don't need my face in those clips. I can strictly just show what I'm doing and it takes a lot less time to do that. It's much harder when you're actually having to be on camera and talking through it. It makes your vlog a little bit shorter too. Sometimes I have a problem with having long, long vlogs, and so that can be an easy way to chop it down. Another good example is if you are going to be doing a workout, maybe you do a time lapse, or if you're going about some daily activity that you do want to show all of it, a time lapse is a great option as well. Now I have a couple more things that I wanted you to talk about because I know when vlogging, it kind of feels like it would be easy, but then you do it and it can be really scary and you're like, what do I talk about? What do I share? What do I record? And so what are some of the things that you do when you press record? Like what do you decide to talk to the camera about or to show? Give us some insight. So a very easy tip is just talk about what is going on right in that moment. Hey guys, I'm here with my husband. We are filming a video for Think Media and our dog is on the ground. Like just talking through what is going on, what's important about that moment, why you picked up your camera and saying, hey, I'm gonna be making lunch soon, and this is what I'm gonna have for lunch. Just narrating your day is a great thing and an easy thing to talk to the camera about. So sometimes I will drag Nolan into my vlog and because it was just too much about me, I'm like, okay, come film something with me. And he'll be there, and it's just good banter going off of each other because he can add things as well. It just makes it a little bit more exciting, and sometimes he can be really fun and funny in vlogs. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> and so it just adds a little bit more of an interesting factor to the narration. One other thing you can do to cover yourself when actually shooting your vlog is to record things, even if you're not talking to the camera about it, because in editing, you can always do a voiceover. And so just pointing the camera or recording some time lapses, just recording some content of the cool things that you're doing is a really great way to kind of cover yourself in the edit in case you need more footage. And going off of that, something I have also done is in my morning routine, that's such an easy thing to talk about. I'll take B-roll of me making my coffee or something. Mm -hmm. And then there will be a point in the vlog where I say, good morning, I just made my coffee. And then over that of me just talking about it, I can overlook that b-roll of me making the coffee and it kind of breaks up your sit down chats to make it a little bit more interesting not just watching one person talk at the camera so how you can actually practically do this is when you talk to the camera about what's happening like we suggested you do think through what that is and then film those things that way you can show it as you're talking about it later in editing so talk about it and then also show it a great shooting tip is to move around and get different locations in your vlog. It can be a little bit boring if you're just sitting in one location the entire vlog. I mean, there are some vlogs that might be more locational, but for those general vlogs, move around, move to different rooms, utilize the space that you have. I know we, for our last three places, have had very small apartments. And even in small places, you can mix up your mm -hmm. angles and make it have a little bit a different feel, go outside and just utilize your space and change up those different angles, change up the rooms just throughout your vlog and it will keep people much more engaged. And one last tip on shooting is get a tripod because you never know when you just want to film something you're doing uh, and it's just a pain if you have to lay the camera on the ground or do something like that. Uh, I also recommend getting one of those mini tripods that we've recommended on this channel before for holding it out. And it'll make mm -hmm. things a bit steadier if you're using a camera, but having an actual tripod can make things feel a lot more natural. And here's one really cool tip that you can do. Instead of talking to the camera all day, if you're out with a friend or something, you can put the camera on the tripod, record your conversation, and then it's almost like that viewer who's watching the video is kind of sitting in with you and it can feel personal talking to the lens, but you could also just record moments where you're talking to someone and then use that in your vlog. I never vlog without a tripod. I always have the little hand tripod. It's mm -hmm. super easy, super small. Like if you're going out with your camera, it's a nice thing to take mm -hmm. with you. I also always use my 
floor tripod because it's just very handy because you don't always have a high surface that is eye level to rest your camera on. Now, before we get to editing, I want you to like this video and then comment down below. Let me know if you guys have more vlogging questions that we can answer for you guys. Maybe we'll make a part two if you guys have questions for us at the end of this video. Let us know in the comments down below. What do we miss? What do you wanna know? Let us know and we'll give you an answer. So now we're gonna talk about editing and I know a lot of you guys are gonna have questions about this, like what editing software do I even use? Well, luckily there's a lot of free editing softwares, whether that's on your phone, your tablet, your computer, you have DaVinci Resolve that's free, you have HitFilm that is free, there's iMovie if you're using a Mac and there's so many tutorials and we even have like a master class on iMovie, link down in the description if you wanna watch that, but definitely just pick one and start learning it and you will get better over time with editing, but there are free options out there for you. You can do a little research, find out which one is gonna be best for you. When it comes to editing, the general rule of thumb is you wanna make it as long as it needs to be, but as short as possible. So trim out those things that you don't need. If you are pausing and thinking through your thoughts and it's like just kind of an awkward pause there, you can cut that out and throw it out because people, they just wanna get into the good stuff. So you really wanna trim out the fat, keep the meat, and use that when editing these vlogs think through what's entertaining and what's not and just get rid of what's not and keep all that good stuff and if it's shorter but more entertaining that's going to be way better for you for your channel than if it's long and it's boring and another thing going along that is if you have a long vlog and you feel like there's a lot of interesting clips in there think is each of these clips serving the purpose of my title if it's a really general title like day in my life mm -hmm. you can just choose your favorites or just keep it long but if it's something super specific like decorate my room with me and there's a little bit of your morning routine in there and you making dinner maybe cut those things out because it's not it doesn't have to do with your title so that can be another really easy rule of thumb when trying to choose which clips to keep in because they're interesting now the most important thing that i think when it comes to a vlog is the first like minute or less it could be the first 30 seconds because people click on a video and then they're trying to decide if they should jump to a different video so you really want to hook in the audience and so do not start your vlog off with hey guys welcome to my vlog my name is nolan and to like Probably your thumbnail and title already explained what you're doing for the day. You don't need to do that right at the very beginning. It's good to introduce yourself and all that kind of stuff. But at the very beginning, what I like for people to do is think about reality TV. If you watch The Bachelor or if you watch, I'm trying to Keeping think. Keeping up with the Kardashians. Yeah, if you, or even Survivor, okay? All these shows show you what's gonna come up in the episode and that makes you wanna stay to see what's going to happen. You wanna see Kim and Chris yell at each other. <laughs> I, I don't know. But the key here is to hook in the audience, let them know what's gonna come up, but don't give them everything. So a great example of a hook, I think was your uh, surprising home visit video. So right at the beginning of this vlog, you're going home, you're gonna go surprise your mom, you go through the door, and this is all within like 10, 15 seconds, Not and either. you actually surprise your mom, and right before we get her reaction, it cuts back to the beginning of the video. Now you can that just video- hear the audio of her reacting. Exactly. You can yeah. just hear the audio and so people can hear like the crazy reaction, but they didn't get to see it. Yeah. And so I'll actually show you what that looks like right now. Sorry. I cannot believe it. Hey guys, welcome back. Now that video actually did really well for you. I think it has like 70,000 views now. Really? And I think it, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but I think this was because not only was it a good title, thumbnail, I think it was a great idea for a video, but Thank then you. you also really hooked in the people within those first 10, 15 seconds and people wanted to stay to see what was gonna happen. And you can do this in your vlog. Find the best part of your video and kind of tease that at the beginning. That's a really simple, simple way to improve your editing to get people to stay longer and watch your vlogs. Another thing that I really like to do with my vlogs, if I don't have a huge huge moment in a vlog like surprising my mom and having that reaction. I have more mundane activities that I'm doing. Then I'll just do a montage of different clips 
from throughout the day. That is kind of my go-to when I'm editing my vlogs. I usually do that. Um, again, there are some exceptions, but that is a very good way to keep people engaged. And it shows the viewer like, oh, this is something I'm interested. Oh, those are things that I like and they'll wanna keep watching. Another really easy thing you can add in editing is sound effects. And again, we have a link in the description with some free sound effects that you guys can use like whooshes and pops and all this kind of stuff just really helps when adding in text or a round of applause. <laughs> all these things are going to help in editing, just keep that viewer engaged. Another thing I like to do is add in music over my video and this can make it very interesting to watch and less awkward. Sometimes people will do time lapse and no one wants to just watch time lapse. Add some nice music on mm -hmm. top of that. So when I'm working out, it's more upbeat. If I'm doing my morning routine, then it's more calm and chill and relaxing. I also add music in my intro and a different song in my outro, and that can also be a very exciting thing to add to your videos as well. Now, for most of us, we wanna keep that pacing fast in our vlogs to keep people engaged. And so if you're sitting down in one spot talking for a long time to the camera. Which isn't crop, bad. No, but yeah, most yeah. a lot of us do that. Uh, crop in, crop out, doing things like that, especially you can use this for like comedic uh, timing. Yeah. If you wanna crop in on your face, if something funny happens, you could do that in your vlogs and it just keeps people engaged. It's a really fun thing to add to your videos by doing that. Really when it comes to your editing, don't overthink all this stuff. You don't have to color grade at all. You might not even know what that means. <laughs> you don't really need to mess with the audio settings unless it sounds like it's really loud or really quiet, then you can adjust that. But keep it simple if you're a beginner. This is the beginner's guide to vlogging. So keep it simple and just work on the editing. Work on the storytelling, bringing people into the beginning of the edit, keeping them there, and then trying to keep a fast-paced story or video, whatever you're doing in your vlog, try and work on that first. And I think that is the most important thing when it comes to editing is just get your reps in and practice. I want you guys to also watch some of your favorite YouTubers and vloggers and see how they edit their videos if you like them, of course. Or even if you watch a video like, I don't like this vlog. Well, try and figure out what about it did you not like? Was it just not an interesting topic? Was the editing slow? Did it take forever to get started? Find out what it is you don't like, what it is you do like, and try and implement that now into your own edit, into your own videos. That's a great tip. That's great. Click on the screen to watch the Canon M50 versus the Sony ZV-1. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.